My name is Alan Baker. I am a lifelong martial artist. I escaped the system as a young man to follow my dreams. And along that journey, I forged a mindset of accomplishment. This allowed me to achieve things that even I didn't think was possible. And sometimes I look back and still am surprised at what I have done in life. On this show, we're going to talk about those things and the mind tools that I learned from my different mentors and how they can help you move forward in your life, separate from the system, and achieve great things. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today, one of the things we're going to be talking about is turning off the noise. And what I mean by turning off the noise is I'm referring to the noise that we put into our brains, uh, that we put into our, our psyche on a daily basis. And um, I've got a pretty good story uh, behind this. I, as a kid, I had pretty severe ADHD. And um, I can remember having to bring home a letter from school informing my mom that it was time to put me on medication to calm me down and keep me under control. And I was very fortunate that the decision mom made was not to do it. Um, of course, it probably wasn't an easy decision because uh, I was a handful as a kid. I was a rowdy kid. And uh, I mean, I remember even now mom will tell me about how I used to fight just going to sleep at night. And apparently uh, I would buck everything. <laughs> so I made things difficult for mom. And, uh, you know, making the choice to add drugs into that situation to bring me down a notch or two was, uh, probably sounded pretty appealing at that time. I could, I could understand it, but thank God she didn't do it. She just chose not to do it. And what she had to do was look around and find a possible art alternative. And, and that, that search is one of the things that introduced me to the martial arts world, and 43 years later, here I am. And, you know, getting introduced to that world, um, there was a lot of things that came out of it for me. And one of it was the opportunity to meet different instructors and different mentors that had a huge effect on my life. And one of them in particular, um, he was a Gung Fu instructor and uh, it was one of my earlier ones. I was fortunate to get introduced to several systems of Gung Fu or Kung Fu when I was a teenager. And this instructor recognized my struggle mentally, um, trying to focus my attention and my mind in order to do things in the classroom and achieve different things. And uh, he, he, like I said, he noticed that I struggled with it. And one of the things he had me do, and I even wrote about this in my first book, is he said, I, I'm going to need you to help me turn off the amount of noise that you put into your mind on a daily basis. Now, at that time, one of the biggest sources of noise for me was television. And, you know, after a few conversations with me, he realized that. And he said, you know, I don't know if you can do this but I want you to turn off TV and uh, or at least severely limit it on a weekly basis. And uh, additionally, he was he suggested turning off the radio. He said, I want you to limit as much input mentally as possible for a while. And that was difficult for me, too, because uh, at that time, I was working at a uh, car stereo installation place. So installing radios and listening to them was a big part of my life. But I was also very driven. And even at that time, I had a lot of drive and determination. And I knew uh, that I wanted to achieve those things. And I did it. And but I, the, the third area of that, too, at that time was gossip. Um, obviously in your teens, you can get a lot of that put in. And that, that was one of the, I guess you could call the Holy Trinity of what he wanted me to eliminate, uh, the television, radio and gossip. 
which probably seemed like a pretty challenging thing to do. Um, but uh, even to my surprise, I think back now, I'm surprised I did it. But um, I did do it. And it took a little time for me to gain more bandwidth mentally from this exercise. Probably, I'm guessing, maybe, you know, four or five months of effort. Um, and then eventually I started to notice that I had more mental bandwidth, um, which gave me more mental energy to focus in different areas. And at that time, I was doing a lot of focus, obviously, on martial arts. That's what I was throwing myself into 100 percent. And I started to notice a change and the ability to gain more focus made me more successful in the academy, um, both in like the drills, uh, sparring, everything started getting more successful for me. And this was the first time I'd ever experienced anything like that. Um, I'd always dealt with a busy mind, you know, shifting attention. And um, I never really had a good method to get that under control until I started looking at that. So um, it was a huge thing. And I maintained it even as I moved through life. Um, for those that are close to me, they'll know that, uh, you know, I haven't owned a television for decades. Um, I just don't have any use for it. I, that eventually, it became habit not to do it. And uh, now I sit down in front of one. I struggle to sit there and waste my time <laughs> with that, uh, that tool. You know, and honestly, same thing with radio. It became a habit for me. Um, a lot of people will have the habit to get in the car, turn that thing on immediately just to have background noise uh, because the consumption of uh, information becomes habit just as much as uh, non-consumption of what I call unnecessary input or information. Uh, so that, that, that additionally became a habit for me as well. And even to this day, um, I irritate a lot of people that will jump in a vehicle with me because it's, you know, on a long trip. Generally, it's just silence. Um, I, I do listen to um, books on occasion on long trips. I've started to make that, that exception. But that was a chosen uh, thing because, you know, once you silence that noise, you can start controlling what inputs you put in. You can choose what you want and, you know, you can choose those things and make them in alignment with what your goals are. Like I, I eventually started developing more goals uh, in business and entrepreneurship. So I started to choose information and knowledge that I wanted to put in. Um, so it was more along the lines of what I needed to be successful in the future. You know, I think that um, I often talk about how the system is set up to program you not necessarily in the best ways uh, to be successful. Sometimes it, you know, it, pro it programs you to be a, a robot, uh, kind of a mindless machine to fit into society, a cog in the wheel, uh, you know, do what you're told, line up where you're supposed to, show up on time, uh, do the work, clock out, go home. And uh, that's what I was introduced to. That's what I was taught. That's what I to was told was normal at that time. So, you know, later I realized that um, I had to remove myself from that system because a lot of the goals I had, uh, both, you know, what I wanted to do and what I wanted to achieve in entrepreneurship did not fit that narrative. And... You know, it kind of makes you the black sheep of the family, so to speak. Um, you kind of get the, for me, I got the small town syndrome. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't fit in with the system. And, uh, you know, I didn't really want to line up with the walking dead. I had other things that I wanted to do. And, you know, all of this, um, one of the things that greatly influenced for me, uh, my ability to pull myself out of that system and start to recreate where I was going in my journey um, was the ability to quieten the noise uh, that, is, that is constantly being put in. Gaining the ability to increase your focus 
And then ultimately, you know, polishing that tool and directing it in the direction that you want to go. You choose your path. You choose your journey. And, um, you know, that's tough sometimes because it's not the norm. Uh, It's not what's common. And the system honestly doesn't really teach you to do that. They want you to fall in line and they want you to be the average uh, walking dead out there. So I can look back now and realize just how powerful that moment was with that instructor and what he taught me and uh, how it carried forward in, into my life and had a huge influence on everything I did, every area um, uh, of achievement. Well, I can, you know, I can look and go, that had a direct effect on it. So it was a huge tool, which is one of the reasons I want to talk about it today. So, you know, um, that's what we're talking about as far as a life skill is your ability to turn off the noise. I, I get to do a lot of coaching with different individuals now. And um, it is a, a mind tool that I teach on a regular basis is your ability to control the amount of information or the amount of noise that is going into your mind on a daily basis. And then you can condition it. You, like we said earlier, you can choose what it is. And there are other things that, um, you know, is going to affect your ability to do that. And one of them, um, though it doesn't sound like it, sound like it would directly be connected to it, it's just getting in shape. You know, um, getting physically in shape, getting healthier, um, staying more hydrated on a daily basis, your diet, um, because, you know, that is your physical machine. The human machine is an amazing thing. And to me, uh, that is the, one of the first things that you've got to get control over before you control the mind, before you control uh, emotional energies and stuff. So uh, that tool would precede it. I didn't realize that was what was being done to me at the time when I was in my teens. Uh, but that's one of the things that that particular mentor did to um, us is it he brought us through a level of physical discipline first. And then he started to introduce different mental disciplines. So at that time, we had spent uh, years working on different things in the academy physically and getting the ability to make the body do what we wanted to do, to have the human machine conform and be disciplined. Uh, Before we started to go into that uh, digital detox, I guess you would probably refer to it as currently, and, you know, also the, the gossip, which is, you know, turning off those time and focus vampires that sometimes will cling to you and uh, try to t- suck all the time and energy out of, out of your life. Um, so, uh, you know, another part of it would be, uh, for me, little things that I did recently to add to that. And um, I do a lot of work in my office. I'll have days where I'm working in the office all day. And then I'll have days where I'm at the academy on the mat, um, uh, side of the mountain for rappelling or climbing. The office changes on a daily basis. Anytime I'm in, in this office and working, one of the things that made a huge difference to me is turning off uh, notifications. And you'll have them on your phone. Yeah, some, uh, some guys will have them on their watch. <laughs> Your computer, it'll ding when that email comes across or a text comes across. I had to turn all that off, Um, especially if you are challenged with trying to keep your focus in a certain area anyway. So, um, you know, I would choose times to go and look um, in those areas. For instance, emails, there would be a certain time of day I'm going to handle those emails. Certain time of day I'm going to handle those texts. Otherwise, those, those things will just pull you away from whatever you're uh, focusing on at that time. And that adds up and kills, uh, you know, a lot of your meaningful uh, life units that you're trying to focus into, you know, getting your A items done uh, every day. And another one of the things, too, um, that was given to me as part of that process was a morning routine. 
When we started to learn about being able to turn that noise off, that at the same time uh, Coach would introduce, we didn't know or we didn't call it a morning routine at that time. He, he was just like, look, I need for you guys to get up every day and do these things. You know, and, and uh, one of the first things he introduced to us was breath. Now, um, there's a lot of different breathing methods that can be done. Um, I was very fortunate, like now you'll look, uh, online and there's different branded breathing methods. This guy does this for this reason. That guy does this for this reason. And it, you know, it's a particular pattern, but the truth is like anything else, simplicity is mastery. And even in breath work, you know, uh, just like learning to write, there is an alphabet, there's specific breathing patterns that all other breathing patterns are built off of. And if you happen to read book one, um, I talk about a breathing pattern in there. It's the one I introduced first, and that's one of the first, uh, what I would refer to as an alphabet breathing pattern, uh, because it teaches a lot of the fundamentals needed for multiple different breathing patterns. And if you understand the parts, then just like making a word or spelling a word, later you can design them according to what you need. Uh, to, according to where you are on your journey. And that's very important because breath uh, is the bridge for a lot of things. It's the bridge to control the mind. It's the bridge to control emotional energy. It's the bridge to control the body. For me, it is the beginning of all of those things. It is a leash that helps you discipline those things and pull them into control. So, um, the introduction to that made a huge difference with, you know, when we started to get a little silence uh, from the input, more bandwidth to play with. And so we had more mental energy to focus in different areas, gaining more control over the consciousness or that mental, that additional mental energy started with breath work and that, that was one of the first tools that started to bring everything together. And then uh, through breath work, uh, it allowed us to gain more, more bandwidth, quite honestly. Um, it helped us get better at clearing the mind and the ability to focus um, or take out the trash, so to speak. And an example of that is uh, I remember one of the things our teachers told us to do. I want you to sit and think about nothing for 10 minutes. And that's, you, if you think about that, that's almost impossible, especially for a teenager. <laughs> and it, it was almost impossible. There was always something popping up in the mind. And when he taught us the breath, that was a way to start dealing with those thoughts, processing them. And eventually over time, through consistent effort, clean them up and start to clean up the landscape, the internal landscape which gives you more command of your mind, which will lead to more command of your life later on. Uh, so, you know, and now we refer to it as a morning routine. So uh, make, if you haven't built one of those, um, I've actually, one of my friends asked me to do a talk on morning routines. I just wrote uh, book three uh, that is coming out fairly soon. And that that's the topic is how to design morning routines uh, because of the amount of power that they possess. And um, it's good to know how to piece them together, just like we talked about on that breath work earlier. You know, there's not one set way. Uh, you want to understand the, the process, how to make a word, how to make a sentence, because your journey will change. You know, your morning routine now is going to be different than a year from now or two years, five years from now, because your goals may change. Um, you may have to focus on different areas that, and, and that's the, one of the powerful things, powerful things about a morning routine is it can help you in multiple different areas, depending on what you want to work on as a human being. It's just, you know, for this discussion, we used it a lot, um, to clear the internal landscape. And then, you know, uh, probably the next thing would be some mental tools that we added to the process just to help be successful. And one of them was, um, for me, always sitting down the night before 
and uh, I'm a big do list guy. I, I have a lot of them, and uh, generally I will I'll have an A uh, do list. I'll have the B do list and the C do list. A means it's priority. I've got to get that done in the next day. But I'll sit down the night before and spend some time determining what are the big items I'm going to work on the next day, and what are the B items, you know, if I get done with the A's first, so on and so forth. And then when I have that focused energy time that uh, on the next day, I can focus it on those big items that I've chosen that uh, move me closer to whatever my goal is that I'm working on at that moment. So that was a, a big mind tool for me that I added to um, this whole concept in order to start getting more done on the daily face or being able to invest that additional uh, focus that was available to me. Um, and prioritizing tasks obviously would fall into that too. Like we said, you know, you're choosing what are your A items, what are your B items, what are your C items. And so choosing what those important ones were. And it was important for me because, like I said, my mind will get distracted. And um, I'm sure this happens to everyone out there at some point or another. You know, you'll sit down to focus on something. I've got to get this done. And then I find myself scrolling on the phone, on social media, or answering an email that's just popped up or something like that. So, oh, and then I'll, I'll have to gain my uh, mental focus and come back over here and focus, you know, and, and regain the priority that I'm trying to work on. So I like to determine what those things are the night before. And then uh, they're clearly defined in my mind. So the next day when I sit down and, um, you know, I've gone through the process, I try to do the morning routine every day, which preps uh, the mind, puts you in a proper state of hustle to get things done. And then for me, like my most quality time is in the mornings. Uh, I've got higher energy. I'm generally clearer. So in the mornings, I will focus on those A items and try to knock them out. So that is um, a little information on what, what I refer to as a life skill, is the ability to recognize that additional noise, that uh, sometimes nonsense that we consume mentally through cell phones, uh, computers, televisions, radios. Uh, sometimes the news is just, you know, worthless information. It's not really doing much for me. And it's not to say you shouldn't take in certain information, but for me, you can choose the source. And, you know, they might not, it might be a source that doesn't have so much clutter um, um, or additional noise added to it. And then, um, you know, once you've gained control of those things, like we had said, it, it will give your mind back. It will give you more mental bandwidth and more, uh, which will lead to more focus. And you want to get that focus honed down to a laser beam. And, and it is a skill. I have to say that uh, I can look back now and every year that I have practiced it, I've gotten better at it. And it's your focus improves over time so that when you choose a path, maybe you are going to invest some uh, life units into an area. When you sit down to focus on it, you focus on it. You have a honed, sharpened mental ability to get after it and stay after it for as long as it takes. And that, uh, my friend, these days is a, a very valuable skill. Okay, guys, I hope you got something out of that. I got a little out of it. Um, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Guys, if I add any value to you with this episode, uh, please do me a favor and like and subscribe so that you will get the updates when new episodes come out. And also, if you like the information, share it with a friend. It really helps us grow and expand and reach more people and uh, do more good.